different from the rest of the videos that I've been posting recently. As you know, I do a lot of thrifting, a lot of altering, a lot of sewing on this channel, but I never really gave you the basic tutorial on how to start sewing or how to get into sewing if you've never ever touched a sewing machine or you just never sewn before. So if you're looking for a video like that, this is for you and without further ado, let's jump into it. The first thing that I'm gonna talk about are the things that you will need to start sewing. As you know, if you wanna be sewing, even if you don't have a sewing machine, you will definitely need some thread and some needles. Number two that you definitely need are some pins. Again, super cheap and you can buy them pretty much everywhere. Number four is sewing chalk or some type of marker. The difference between a normal chalk and a sewing chalk is that the sewing one is flat so you can make, you know, precise lines on your clothing. The big plus with using sewing chalk is that you can easily then like wipe away the lines after you're done sewing. Me personally, I just grab a normal washable marker or a pencil that won't be visible after a wash in the washing machine so yeah another thing that you will need is a really good pair of scissors or a roller cutter if you're gonna be using scissors I would suggest having one pair of scissors for everything else and then one pair of scissors just separately for all the fabric cutting that's just because when you're cutting fabrics it's really important to have sharp scissors just so you don't damage the fabric unnecessarily or make some uneven cuts again me personally I've been sticking to a roller cutter because it's kind of like more precise for me and also I've been using these scissors for everything else so <laughs> they're not really sharp anymore the next thing that you will need is a good ruler um, I'm just using my basic school ruler which is not the best but it works there are so many of these cool like professional rulers but like if you're just starting to sew this will do perfectly okay anyways so that was all like the necessary things that you would need in your sewing kit if you're just starting to sew now let's talk about my baby over here my lovely old sewing machine you definitely don't need a sewing machine if you're just gonna be I don't know sewing up a hole here and there but if you want to make your life easier um, definitely get one of these I just cannot express how good it feels and how good it is to know how to sew and how to use a sewing machine it's so much easier than it looks and once you get the hang of it it just makes your life so much more easier and guys this is coming from a unprofessional sewer I've never went to any sewing classes I learned how to use this completely off of YouTube so yeah just take it from me as like a normal human being but yeah guys let's talk about the machine specifically honestly it just completely depends up to you I started with like a very basic simple singer machine I got it for Christmas it was nothing special super super basic but it was everything that I needed at the time the only thing was that it broke after a couple of months because I was like going hard at it <laughs> but yeah then I actually found this little baby in our garage I think like this machine is older than me it's been here for years years and years and it's still looking brand new and it works perfectly the name is Husqvarna 5710 I don't even know if they make them anymore I don't think so I think Husqvarna now makes like garden machines I'm not sure but yeah if you're just getting into sewing I would suggest buying one of those singer machines or you know go to your grandma's place your mom's place maybe they have like a really old amazing sewing machine laying in their garage somewhere <laughs> Now, let's talk how to operate the machine. This will be a little bit different for every single one of them. I would suggest going onto Google and just typing in the name and the like the number and just watch a couple of tutorials to understand how to, you know, thread the needle, how to get the thread there, blah, 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 blah. And again, don't get overwhelmed by this. Like, I know it can be stressful. Um, this little baby, as I said, is older than me. So there was like zero tutorials on YouTube. The only one that I found was in Russian, so... <laughs> I 
don't even know how I understood, but I kind of did. I don't know. But yeah, if you don't want to watch those tutorials, I'm just going to give you a very quick rough tutorial right here. That should work for most of the machines, but I don't promise you that. The way that the machine works is that you have two threads coming out right here, as you can see. One of them is coming from the above, one of them is coming from below. So the first step that you will do is thread your thread and your needle. Whew. My machine has this little thing for the thread in the back, so I just pop it onto there. As you can see, there is like this little compartment and you kind of have to lead the thread through it and then thread the needle below. Then as you can see, it has like this little foot here and you just lead the thread through there and put it in the back. Now we will take care of the bottom thread, which is right here below the needle. Every machine has this, you just pop this off and then pop this little thing from it and here you have your bottom thread. These little plastic things will come with your sewing machine and they just basically hold your bottom thread. The way to loop the thread on is either you can do it manually just by hand which takes forever or you can watch a tutorial and learn how your machine does that because again that's kind of different for everybody else. Basically I just take the thread from above, I'm just gonna loop a couple of loops on onto there just like that and then I'm gonna pop it onto this little thing in the back. It should be in the back usually but maybe your machine will be different and then I just press the foot pedal and let it do its job. And there we go. Now you take this little metal thing again put it into there, loop it through this little hole there. Then you just put it back in. You take the top thread into your hand and just do one slow round with your foot pedal, which will take up the thread. We can close this up and you're done. So hopefully you got at least like a tiny idea on how to thread your machine, but I would still suggest watching a tutorial just separately for your model of the machine. Anyways, now that we know how to thread the machine, you will need to know at least two stitches to be a successful sewer. Honestly, to this day, I still use just these two, okay? For your basic stitch, and the stitch that I think you will use the most is your classic straight stitch. You can see it on my machine right here. The way I do it personally is that if I sew anything, I sew it first using a straight stitch see how it fits, see how it looks, and then when I'm happy with it, I secure it with the second stitch that I'm gonna show you, which is the zigzag stitch. The difference is that a straight stitch is used on non-stretchy materials and a zigzag stitch is used on stretchy materials, which is usually the most of it. Here we have them next to each other. As you can see, the zigzag stitch is completely stretchy and the straight stitch is not and it would break if I would pull harder. But yeah, as I said, I do it the way that I just sew it with a straight stitch and then finish it off with a zigzag stitch over it. That way you can be safe that it will hold on non-stretchy fabric and also on the stretchy ones. And also also when you cut off the access fabric after you're done sewing, the zigzag stitch will kind of act like a serger, which is this thing on your clothing, which basically means that it will prevent your fabric from starting to fray. The last two things that you will need to know how to set on your sewing machine is the density of your stitch and the tightness. To be honest, to this day, I still really don't know how to set those properly. So usually what I do before sewing is that I will take a fabric similar to the one that I'm gonna be sewing. I set it somewhere in the middle and try to run a few stitches on that fabric. And if it doesn't look right, I'm just gonna like, you know, play around with it a little bit more. And then if it does, I'm just gonna leave it in the middle. So now that you have all the basic things, now that you know how to thread your machine, now that you know the basic stitches, the question that remains is where do you start? That is a little complicated question because it's gonna be different for everybody else but the thing that worked for me <laughs> and I think it's the best, is that you should start with like gentle, tiny alterations on your own clothing. And then once you get the hang of that, understand your machine, understand how it works, you can move on to bigger projects. You can learn how to sew from scratch. You can learn how to do patterns, etc., etc. But if you want to take my advice, start from the alterations. And by alterations, I mean that you have a piece of clothing that doesn't really fit you properly and you make it fit you better. For example, I started with pants if you want to see my tutorial on how to alter pants which i think is a perfect tutorial where you could start 
this is the link for it somewhere here or I'm gonna put it into the bio. But for now, let's take care of this pretty baby, which is, as you can see, a little bit too big in my waist and that is also a bit too long. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it on inside out. Then I'm going to take my pins. I'm going to pin exactly where I want the fabric to end. Now that I took the dress off, I'm just gonna put it onto the table and just make it as flat as possible. And I'm just gonna pin down where I'm gonna be sewing. You can definitely use your ruler and a marker here just to make it easier for you and to, you know, directly see where to be sewing. But honestly, I'm too lazy and I just kinda wanna wing it. So yeah, I'm just going to pin it down. And just like that, I have both of the sides pinned down and I can go ahead and start sewing. I'm of course gonna be needing a red thread because I'm sewing with a red dress, so I'm going to re-thread the whole machine. I'm gonna be using a straight stitch because as you can see, it's not a stretchy fabric. And I'm also gonna be taking in just a little bit, so I'm not gonna use the straight stitch after because I'm not gonna be cutting any excess fabric off. Also, I just realized that I completely left out a very important thing. When you are starting or finishing a stitch, you have to back sew at least once. Basically, you just sew a little bit normally, then you press a button somewhere on your machine. Again, every single machine has it differently. I, for example, press one of these little things down and it basically makes your stitch go backwards. Then you let the button go and just continue your stitch as you would normally. This will prevent your stitch from unraveling and it will just make sure that it holds. Also, another thing, before you start sewing, you have to put the foot down this is also a little bit different on every single machine. I have a tiny little hook right behind my machine and I just like do that and it just collapses onto my dress and holds it firmly onto the machine. So yeah, before you start sewing, put the hook down, then back sew, then you can keep sewing. So now I finished the stitch. I'm gonna back sew a couple of stitches and front sew. Then I'm gonna lift the foot, I'm gonna remove the needle, then I'm gonna remove the dress and cut it off, and I'm done. And as you can see, it fits me perfectly. The stitches look beautiful on each side, so I'm very happy with this. And now for the last step, I'm just going to hem it, which basically means that I'm going to make it shorter. Basically, I'm just gonna go and turn this dress inside out again, and I'm just going to fold up the skirt and pin it down where I want it to end. Now I'm going to put it onto a cutting board and I'm going to measure how much I want to be taking away. And because I'm going to be taking away five centimeters, I'm going to cut away around three or two just to leave some seam allowance. And as you can see, it's a curved hem, so I'm going to just follow the hem with my roller cutter very carefully and cut it off. Just like that. And now we're going to hem this dress, which means we're going to take the rough edge and we're going to fold it up one time and then another time. Then we will sew it down using a straight stitch. This way the raw hem will be hidden behind the fabric. If you're doing it for the first time, you can definitely pin it down, you can definitely iron it down. You know, just make it as easy as possible for you. But just because I kind of know how to do this and I've been doing it for many years, I'm just gonna go with the flow and I'm not gonna pin it, I'm not gonna iron it, I'm just going to fold it up as I sew and hopefully it will turn out well. <laughs> And this is how the stitch should be looking like. This is it from the back. As you can see, not even mine is perfect. Like it's not completely straight, but it's fine. And this is how the dress looks on. It literally took me less than 15 minutes and it looks so much better than it did. It fits me like a glove. I didn't have to pay for anything. So yeah, a definitely a big plus if you know how to sew. That was it for me and my lovely lady right here. If you have any questions, definitely comment them down below and I'm gonna try my best to answer to all of them. If you like the video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. If you have a minute, go check out my Instagram, my TikTok, my Pinterest, and my Vinted. And yeah, guys, that's said. I love you so, so much. Thank you for all your support and I will see you in my next video. Bye!